Hi guys, this is Mihai from DNN Sharp. Today, I'm going to show you another great thing you can do with DNN Sharp products. You should know by now that all the great tutorials can be found on our blog page, blog.dnnsharp.com/1001, and in order to get notified every time we upload a new video tutorial, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the big red button here. Now, today, I wanted to show you how to create a um, bar with useful information similar to the one that we display on our help center, the one that shows the um, rating of our support quality and the average response time and the number of tickets waiting in queue. Uh, this is a simple HTML module here with some HTML and uh, which makes use of a couple of my tokens to display the information and it is used to be shown on multiple pages. You probably noticed it on my tickets as well. It's the same bar. Uh, it has a position fixed to uh, stay always at the bottom of the screen this was what i wanted to show you for today but then thought why not go one step further and i uh, recalled that all the news channels have some news stickers at the bottom of their screens where they scroll news all the time well why not just do that instead so Today I'm going to show you how to create a CSS news ticker horizontal. I found some code online, which is some scrolling text. The text scrolls from right to left, pretty much what I wanted to do. I'm just gonna remove the extra HTML code from here and I'm going to copy it on my website just to see it working as it is right now. So I'm gonna copy the HTML, I'm gonna go to my web page. Over here I'm gonna add an HTML module. This is what I'm gonna use today for this. Inside the HTML module let's add some content. We're gonna go to the HTML. So we have the um, HTML here and we also need the CSS which we're going to place here in between style tags. Uh, let's grab the CSS as well. We want the compiled CSS. I'm going to copy it, go back to the page, paste and save. So this is the news bar as it was online. Now to change it, to make it ours, I've already went ahead and created one table in my database, which I named new sticker. And inside it, I have an ID column, a title description. I've added a create an, created on column in which I store the um, date and time when the news was added to the database and another column with minutes to display which I thought to be the number of minutes for which the news is supposed to be shown on the screen after the moment it was created. So I got my table and then I went ahead and added a grid to my page and I've set it up so I can view and change the items in my database table, in my new sticker database table. Uh, this grid is simple. It has a table as data source, the new sticker table. I've selected the ID column, so nothing fancy here. It's just the standard 
grid setup i've added the title description and minutes to display columns with a delete button and that's it also an inline ad which will allow me to add new news wow how that sounds so nothing fancy there i'm gonna add um, some news now i'm gonna say wow summer is almost here and this should be visible for 10 minutes from now save and let's add another one oops i did it again for 100 minutes save now we have the news in the database we just need a way to display it on the page and in order to do that you probably know from previous um, videos that we're gonna use my tokens the best for doing this it's a razor script token uh, you've seen them implemented in the um, how to build your own blog module video um, and many others so we're gonna use a razor script token which basically generates the html for the news and we also need a database token which pulls the data from the database and sends it to the razor script token let's go to my tokens i'm gonna create a new token i'm just gonna make a new namespace I'm gonna call it my news make it available on all portals and uh, let's make the database token first uh, get news a database token and i'm gonna select a title and description from new sticker where now i'm gonna compare with the current date and time what i have in my database which is basically i'm gonna add to the um, created on column i'm gonna add the minutes to display column and it adds minutes the token returns title and description it returns the title by default next save we have the token let's test it just to make sure i didn't do any mistake there run script of course monads to display of course i'm gonna change this here that's it so i got the parameters wrong so we're adding uh, minutes to display to the created on date as minutes this is the correct query and it returns the title and the description um, i'm just gonna copy it and go update it in the query for the token next save now that we have the database token to get the data we need to create the razor script token which will create the html for the news so on the same namespace my news i'm gonna name it ticker uh, and 
as for all Razor script tokens, they all start like this. And now we're gonna do a for each loop. So we're gonna do for each uh, item in uh, our um, database token, which was my news get news i think that was the token yes get news now for each of the items in there we're gonna do this uh, we need to create this line of html code every time so each news is the same html code just with different content so i'm gonna copy one from here i'm gonna paste it here uh gonna remove the text and I will have here, um, let's say I'm gonna use the um, title with bold font and it's at item dot title item because this is how I named it here and title because this is what the database token brings and then outside the bold area i'm gonna do the same thing just that i'm gonna use item description let's save it and see if it actually works of course And now we have two items, two HTML elements, two divs with our news. We will take this token and we will replace the HTML that we copied from the CodePen website. So in our HTML module, we're gonna go to the bottom and we're gonna replace these four lines with the my tokens token i've clicked save i'm gonna exit edit mode just so i can see the ticker And of course, I only see the my token now because I forgot to change the settings for the HTML module to also allow tokens. I'm gonna go to settings and under settings, I'm gonna check the replace tokens checkbox. Click update. Again, exit edit mode and This is the ticker bar with the news. Now, there's one small problem here. If uh, you add multiple news, uh, you will notice that um, you will end up with a scrolling text that moves too fast for you to be able to read. I've, I have four now and the speed is doubled. To fix that, you will also have to create a token to instruct the CSS for how long 
to keep the animation running. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to the database token where we bring the news and on top of bringing the title and the description, we'll, we will also do a count of how many news we're bringing. So I'm going to count title, it doesn't really matter, uh, as number. And in order to be able to use the count here, we're going to do this and the count, we will multiply it with five because I saw that five seconds is more than enough for one piece of news. So now this um, database token will return the title, the description and the number of the news items multiplied by five, which we're going to use as an animation duration. I'm going to add the number as well for the token. So it will be outputted. Save. And let's see what we have here. So I guess I have only two valid news items. I'm going to add a new one. 100 minutes again, save. Let's go and execute the token again. It should show me 15 seconds now. There it is. Okay, so now that we have the token that calculates the time for the duration, we're gonna go to the um, HTML module And we're going to look for animation. There it is. Animation duration, which now is, is fixed, 30 seconds. We're going to replace 30 with the my tokens token. and click save. So now the duration is also flexible. It's dynamic based on the number of news that you, we are bringing. And this is your new sticker built entirely with DNN Sharp modules. I hope you like this and you'll find a great use for it in your future implementations. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you have any ideas for future videos, text us and we'll make them happen. See you again for another great tutorial. Bye!